Well, hey guys. So we're getting to the point of the year where I'm starting to look at all the plants I save, the ones I set around the front porch, around the farm, and I'm starting to think, it's time to do some maintenance. As you can see on this philodendron, it has been in here for over a year now, actually just right about a year. I do this once a year where I take my philodendrons, these go on the front porch, they flank a door on the front porch, they get beautiful and big every year, and really I wanna keep them in this size pot. So they're starting to overgrow the pot, how do I know? Well, look at their aerial roots. Look at these, these are roots actually. Philodendron like this can actually kind of grow on trees in their native habitat. And they send out these aerial roots and this is what helps give them stability. And they can actually attach to things. Well, guess what? We don't need all these roots. Not only does it look ugly, but the, you can tell that the plant is actually outgrowing the size of pot it is in. So what I have to do is kind of do some maintenance on it, take it out. And so what we're gonna do is just really repot it reset it and actually kind of root prune. So I'm doing this obviously out in my yard. This is a stone table, so it can be dirty. The dirt goes down into this perennial bed. It doesn't matter. I haven't done really my spring cleanup yet. So we're all good as far as that goes. Now, as you can see, this is kind of a way to know when a house plant needs repotting too. Look how thick those roots are. Look how they are really starting to encircle that root ball. They're wanting to now send out all these new roots. It's really best to do at this point just tear it apart. So I use a freezer knife. They're extremely sharp, they're serrated. You can get them at literally any thrift shop. We'll have so many of these. So what I do to start is I just, you can kind of come in here and you can see there are some main, kind of just the core of the plant is right here at the base. And you can at this point, if you want, just take them all apart. And that's kind of what I do. I just get in here. And this is what's gonna scare a lot of people because they're gonna be like, you are killing the plant. Guys, this plant is probably five, six years old now. I do this every year. I'm gonna promise you something. I haven't killed one yet. I'm ripping it apart. And what you can see is really there are multiple plants within this and they're all sending off these beautiful shoots. So if I would want to, I could actually plant and pot up each one of these separately. But what I'm gonna do is take some of these and I'm just gonna trim off a lot of these roots, this is kind of extreme root pruning, which it looks scary and I totally get that. But honestly, what you're doing is you're helping the roots go back to a smaller size so you can put them back in the pot and they can really just regrow. So you're kind of helping the plant overall and you're giving it so much space to start to regrow, branch out in and just kind of become anew. So also by this time of year, look at these leaves. They're kind of becoming too much. And honestly, they've had so much growth on them, they're gonna crowd out a lot of the new leaves. So what I like to do, I do this every year. Now, if you have a house plant you love, just pop this thing up, put a piece right back in there, you're gonna be good to go. Since I bring these outside and I want them to have tons of new growth, flesh out new growth, I do something even more drastic. I take these, take my knife, and there they go. So what this is gonna to allow to do is all these new leaves to start coming out. It's gonna allow pretty much a whole new plant to come up. So you can, these by the way, make the best decoration in your house. Last year I put them in a vase and they were on my dining room table for three months and I finally decided, you know what, it's time to just throw them out. They weren't turning brown even, they last forever. They're one of the best tropicals to do that too. Can you think of a vase of that in your house? So what I'm gonna do is make sure I use this pot every year and it has great drainage. How I know that, you can see the hole in the bottom. Now, I don't want that just to get clogged with soil. So I'm actually gonna take a shard of another plant that kind of has a little bit of shape to it. And I'm gonna put that over that hole so I can make sure the water can still get underneath the piece of terracotta I just put in there. But the soil itself will stay more in the pot than just try to clog that hole as water is getting out. No plant likes to sit in water unless it's a water plant, because then it totally does, but that's completely different. Then it wants to be floating in water. Any other plant, they don't want to do that. So I'm just using a good quality potting soil. This one happens to be local to me, which is even better. And when I say good quality potting soil, even though plants like this maybe wouldn't mine, I don't like to have chemicals in it. I don't like to have a chemical fertilizer. I instead like to control all that. I like a potting soil that has a lot of rich, 
beautiful compost in it that has good nutrients in it, but not synthetic fertilizers. So what I'm gonna do is sift through these and I'm gonna look for ones I wanna plant, whether it's just one or multiple. You can see this one now, every so often I can I do this too because it's starting to get such a big stem to it. And same with this one has a gorgeous, look at that. Look at these roots that are coming off of it. So I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna trim some of these up and then we're gonna pot them up. So you can see I've set two kind of plants in here. It really only needs one, but I like to get it nice and full during the summer growing months. I try to mix and kind of put a lot of new soil in. It's not that you have to throw out all of your old soil, but throughout a year, as you water it, a lot of the nutrients just kind of seep out of it and it doesn't have too much left. So I like to mix in a lot of good quality soil into it so the plant has something to thrive off of. Old potting soil, I either use in the bottom of large pots or I will put it on my compost pile where it can mix with good compost and leaf clippings and grass clippings and mix together into something even better. So you can see, I'm just potting this back up. I'm pressing that soil down in and then I'm gonna water it well because watering, it does two things guys. Watering is not just to give a water. It also helps get any of those air pockets and air bubbles that are in that loose soil out because those air pockets can actually be hard on the roots. They can dry out little areas of roots, give you some dieback that you don't know about. So it's important to give it a good watering, a good drenching, where it wants to drip out the bottom and then let it dry out in between. Plants don't like to sit in water. They like to be watered well, dry out, then watered again. And all that can depend whether you're outside, inside, anything. So I'm gonna keep working on my second plant. These are just kind of fun ones I like to bring you to show you my process, what I do, and I hope what comes across, plants are easier than you think. They really want to live, they thrive to live, and they need maintenance and upkeep. That might scare you at first, but actually is gonna help them be healthier, bigger, better plants. You're gonna become a plant person before you know it. So as always, I hope you share this video around. Share it with your friends, share it on your threads, your walls, why? Yeah, it helps me, but it also helps so many people see that this is easy. If I can do it, you can do it. We can all do it. And this world will be a greener place and that's always a good thing. So get out there, get some plants, become a crazy plant person like me. Uh, it happens before you know it, guys. Okay, I'm gonna keep going.